Hey Barber Man, I have a serious question. What is up Broccoli Boy? Have you ever wondered why some things are so strong but other things can break so easily? Yes I have. I've wondered why I am so strong and you are so weak. Is that what you mean? Ha ha no Mr. Clean. I am referring to the intermolecular forces in chemistry. Do you know anything about those? Yes I happen to be an expert on the topic. Well that's a first. Ha ha ha. Funny broccoli boy. But I really am the master of all things chemistry. Intermolecular forces are the forces of attractions that exist between molecules in a compound. These cause the compound to exist in a certain state of matter, solid, liquid, or gas, and affect the melting and boiling points of compounds as well as the solubilities of one substance in another. Oh so different substances have different forces holding it together, depending on what elements make up the compound. Exactly right. There are many intermolecular forces that exist, but I will start with the strongest, which is ionic bonding. Ionic bonds occur between a metal and a non-metal and are responsible for the extremely high melting and boiling points of ionic compounds and metals. Being the strongest force, species that contain ionic bonds also contain all other weaker bonds. The next of which is hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonds occur between polar covalent molecules that possess a hydrogen bonded to an extremely electronegative element, specifically, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Are you keeping up with me broccoli boy? Yes. Just like the students in Mrs. Smola's chemistry class, I understand very quickly. Ionic bonds are strongest and they occur between a metal and a non-metal. And hydrogen bonding is the next strongest. They occur between hydrogen and... Um, maybe I wasn't paying as close attention as I thought. Hydrogen bonds occur between nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Are you up to speed Mr. Green Machine? Yes. Thank you. What forces are the next strongest? Dipole-dipole forces are the next in line. Only polar covalent molecules have the ability to form dipole-dipole attractions between molecules. Polar covalent molecules act as little magnets, they have positive ends and negative ends which attract each other. The weakest intermolecular force is London dispersion forces. All molecules have the capability to form London forces. These are solely dependent on the surface area and the polarizability of the surface of the molecule. These are the only types of forces that non-polar covalent molecules can form. They result from the movement of the electrons in the molecule which generates temporary positive and negative regions in the molecule. The most common London forces occur between two atoms of the same species. It all makes sense to me now. You know so much about weak forces because you are the weakest of all superheroes. Correct chemistry king? Actually broccoli boy, I know so much because I pay attention in Mrs. Smola's chemistry class. I advise you to wake up and pay attention yourself. I will think about it Barber Man. But how do these forces relate to whether a substance is a solid, liquid, or gas? Well, the stronger the attractions between particles, the more difficult it will be to separate the particles. Therefore strong intermolecular forces are solid at room temperature. When the substance is melted, the particles are still close to one another but the forces of attraction that held the particles rigidly together in the solid state have been sufficiently overcome to allow the particles to move. So cold or room temperatures plus strong forces will usually give you a solid substance? Yes sir. The warmer the temperature gets, more bonds are broken. The overall forces become weaker until they are finally overcome in the gaseous state. Okay. I think I am now up to speed. Would you like to quiz me? We can give it a try. Can you list the intermolecular forces in order of increasing strength? Easy peasy. The weakest is London dispersion then dipole dipole. Next is hydrogen bonding. And the strongest is ionic bonding. Impressive. If the compound sodium chloride, or NaCl is at room temperature, will it be a solid liquid or gas? Well, according to my calculations, since sodium is a metal and chlorine is a non-metal, I concur ionic bonding. So definitely a solid. Plus I should know about salt. It makes broccoli very tasty. Wonderful. I'm so glad to hear about your eating habits. No prob Bob. But hey Barber Man. 
I have a question for you. Wow, an actual question. What is it, Broccoli Boy? If you aren't part of the solution, what are you a part of? Hum, the problem. No. If you aren't part of the solution, you are part of the precipitate. Ha ha ha. Nice one. I should have seen that coming. Ha ha ha. Here's another question. Why did carbon marry hydrogen? Because they fell in love. No silly goose. They bonded well from the minute they met. Covalently bonded that is. Very nice broccoli boy. While you have the jokes, I have the smarts. True, but while you are weak, I am strong. Touche, Mr. Green Machine. Let's call it even. I will see you in Mrs. Smola's class tomorrow. Ha ha ha. Yes. Thank you for making me smarter as well as stronger. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.